Hello and welcome to Inside Rugby, my name's Mark and in this episode I'm going to be covering the All Blacks versus the Wallabies in Dunedin, New Zealand this weekend. This is the preview video, this is where you're going to get all the news on the teams. Let's check it out. So welcome to Inside Rugby, my name's Mark and if you haven't joined us before, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be here all the way through the warm-up games and the Rugby World Cup this year. It's going to be exciting for all of us rugby fans. Now, after last weekend's uh, thrashing of the Wallabies in Australia, Ian Foster and crew have decided to ring in the changes and give everybody an opportunity in this last game in New Zealand before they head off overseas for their final warm-up game before they take on France at the beginning of the Rugby World Cup. And I've got to say, and I've got to give credit to Ian Foster, I think this is a great move, making so many changes to the team and giving so many players the opportunity to show what they've got. And I think that's all that players ask for, is be given the opportunity to show what they've got. It's up to them then to perform on the day and see whether they're good enough to be named in that team on Tuesday at Napier when the All Blacks team will be announced to go to the Rugby World Cup. So we're heading to Dunedin this weekend, Forside Bar Stadium. It's an indoor stadium, so it doesn't matter what the weather is, we're going to get a good hard track, I think. And the Wallabies are coming off that thrashing in Australia, and it's going to be really interesting to see what turns up as far as the Australians go. As we know, Eddie Jones is already under a lot of pressure. Everybody's talking about Eddie Jones in a negative sense, and it's going to be interesting to see whether they can turn it around this weekend against this very much changed all-black outfit. And let's have a look at the Wallabies first because they haven't really made that many changes at all. In fact, it's only through injury that Eddie Jones has decided to make a couple of changes here and uh, one or two surprise positional changes too as far as I'm concerned. So looking at the Australian team first of all, and let's have a look at their backs. It's the same back line that started last weekend against New Zealand. And I think if we look at the first 10 or 15 minutes of that game where Australia had some parity with New Zealand, um, it was through their backs being able to move the ball and put a little bit of pressure on the All Blacks. So I think Eddie Jones has said, right, these guys are good enough, but they've got to turn it on for 80 minutes. And that's something they didn't do last weekend against the All Blacks. So at fullback, we've got Callaway on the wings, Nawa Kwanta Wasi, and on the other wing, Marika Korayimbeti. Um, like those two guys, I think both of them bring fantastic opportunity for this Australian backline to make line breaks, but also good in defence. I've seen some good hard work from that back three in the last couple of games, so no problems there. So inside those guys, we've got Pattaya and Karevi. Again, a very stable combination here that Eddie Jones seems to like, and they seem to be doing pretty well. Karevi is very big, both in defence and offence and um, getting him more of the ball would be a good thing for the Wallabies. And then inside them we've got Carter Gordon at 10 and we've got Tate McDermott coming back in at halfback. He'll be happy that Scott Barrett's not playing in this game so he doesn't get crunched again by Scott Barrett. He might get crunched by someone else this weekend. So that's the back line for the Wallabies. They've gone with the same back line that started against New Zealand last week. I think that's a good move. It's giving these guys a second opportunity to step up. And as I said, I think they went pretty well in that first 15 minutes or so against the All Blacks. Okay, let's have a look at the Wallabies forwards. And in the front row, we've got Bell Pareki at hooker and Fuwa Masali as the other prop. So a change here in Fuwa Masali coming in with the injury of Taniala Tupo. So this is a good move. I think that uh, this is a, a good pack, but I think the All Blacks are going to be too strong in the tight three for this particular Wallabies team and that could be causing some problems for them in scrum penalties as well as getting any clean ball. In the uh, in the locks we have Nick Frost and Richie Arnold. Arnold had a good game I thought when he came on last week and he's been rewarded for that by Eddie Jones by getting a start in this game. And the funny thing was I thought Will Skelton had a pretty good game against the All Blacks for patches of that game. But obviously, Eddie Jones has thought that uh, Richie Arnold deserves an opportunity to start in this game. And that's exactly what he's got. So looking at the back three for Australia, we've got McWright, Hooper and Valentini. And these three look good to me. I think they're a pretty good combination. Tom Hooper I've been impressed with. I think this guy's only going to get better with the games that he plays. 
and of course his namesake Michael Hooper is still out with that calf injury and the Australians are really siding on the side of caution with this guy because it seems to me that calf injury is a little bit more serious than what we might have anticipated. So Valentini's been going well. The only thing I'd say is that like most of these Australian players, they've got to find an 80 minute game. There's no use playing a good solid 20 or 30 minutes against the All Blacks. It's not going to get the job done. So Valentini, McWright and Hooper are going to be responsible for stealing a lot of ball. They've got to get into that position early. And the All Blacks conceded last week that the Australians were better than them in many instances when it came to clear outs, getting their body position in the right way and getting that ball off the All Blacks and putting a little bit of pressure on them in that first 15 or 20 minutes. So it's something that Jason Ryan and the All Black forwards have been working on this week at practice. And it'll be interesting to see whether the Wallabies back three are still able to put that uh, work on the All Blacks. So looking at the Wallabies bench, we've got Yusili, Slipper, Nagore, Skelton, Leota, White, Cooper and Perezzi. So a good bench there, nothing outstanding. I think Perezzi does well when he comes on. He's a pretty dynamic player, got a lot of strength and a lot of speed. Uh, Quade Cooper for me, still a question mark over that guy, his all-round ability, but his kicking, his kicking seems to improve a little bit. But again, I think that this team is just not at the level of the All Blacks and it's going to be really interesting as I go through the All Black new team that's been announced um, to see what you think, whether you think they can still carry on and do what the team did last week against this Australian Wallaby team. So I would say it's a good team for the Wallabies. I think Eddie Jones has rewarded those players that did play well last weekend, particularly uh, from those backs. We're seeing the whole back line restart and only a few changes in the forward. So obviously Jones is trying to get some sort of combinations going. He's running out of time, of course. He's missing Michael Hooper and uh, only time will tell whether or not he can pull this back from the brink of disaster. Now the All Blacks, there must be some high confidence in this team at the moment after winning three games on the trot and looking pretty good in doing it as well. But Ian Foster, Jason Ryan and Joe Smith won't be resting on their laurels because there has been different times in those games where the All Blacks have looked under pressure and they didn't seem to be making the headway that they would have wanted. And I'm talking about perhaps the last 60 minutes of the game against South Africa, the last half against Argentina in Argentina and uh, in the first 10 or 15 minutes against the Wallabies if I was going to be super critical those were the periods of play I think in the rugby championship where the All Blacks were on par with their opposition or even being put under a lot of pressure so I think the All Blacks this particular team and all these changes that Ian Foster has made are going to be looking at increasing that intensity to another level and making sure they play a large percentage of this game in the opponent's half and scoring points. So the All Black backline looks different, very much different this weekend. We've got Will Jordan going to fullback. And the interesting thing is that he's played most of his games for the All Blacks on the wing, yet the fullback position is his own preferred position. So we'll see how he goes. Seems as though the Kiwi public's pretty excited about this. Been Jordan back at fullback. And uh, Bowden Barrett's been given a rest this weekend to see what Jordan can do there at fullback. On the wing, Sean Stevenson finally gets his opportunity as a run-on player for the All Blacks in Dunedin. A big opportunity for Stevenson. He really wants to go to the World Cup. It looked like he was going to be missing out there for a while, but he does have an opportunity this weekend to show the selectors what he has to give before that team for the Rugby World Cup is announced on Tuesday in Napier. So it's going to be a really big game for Sean Stevenson. We know he's a good player. Can he bring it to test match high intensity rugby level? We're going to find out this weekend in Dunedin. Lester Fuanga Nua Nuku is on the other wing. Um, again, exciting player. Good to see him back in the team. And I'm sure he's going to be really, really good. There's no doubt about it. The All Blacks have a richness in backline players. Um, speed, power, tenacity, energy levels, game breakers. Um, there's a lot of them in this All Black squad. So good to see Lester back in the team for this weekend. Now in the centres we have Braden Enor coming from the Crusaders of course, good to see him there. And I think Foster and crew are looking for Braden to be able to be that utility back that comes in off the bench in the bigger games and, um, and covers those positions. So he's been given an opportunity this weekend in the 13 shirt. 
Then we have Anton Leonard Brown came on sh for a brief period against the Auss Aussies last weekend. Looked really good. Did a break that led to a try. And um, yeah, big raps on this guy. Let's hope he gets back to full fitness and full level this weekend against the Australians. And then at 9 and 10, we've got the halfback coming in this weekend is Finlay Christie. And we've got Damien McKenzie back in at number 10. Now, Christie is not one of my favorite guys. And the reason for this, and I want you to maybe have a look at this in the game in the weekend, when he passes the ball, there's always a hesitation and a delay. And I think the Aussie back three are going to take advantage of that this weekend. I think Christie's going to get caught a number of times when he's trying to clear that ball out, particularly when it's slow coming out of the breakdowns and the rucks. And I think the Aussies are going to target Finlay Christie in this particular era area the other thing i don't like and i've said it in other videos is that his distribution to the backs is delayed just that split second with his passing technical ability and if you compare him to someone like aaron smith or roy guard you've got a completely different distribution pattern there so that's just something that i feel about finlay christie but he's a good player and uh, we'll see how he goes this weekend damon mckenzie gets another shot and we all know how good he can be and uh, it'll be interesting to see whether he piles it on this weekend for the All Blacks. His kicking game is also going to be important in this 15 for the All Blacks, both strategic kicking and goal kicking. And uh, we'll see how he comes up on that compared to what we've seen already from Richie Moang and Bowden Barrett so far in the series, who've pretty much been nailing it as far as strategic kicking goes, as well as goal kicking in as well. So there's the, uh, the back line for the All Blacks this weekend. A really good backline. I really like it. These guys have got to step up and show what they've got because we've seen in the last couple of games with the team that Foster and Co have put together, they've got some pretty stiff competition. So if they want their name on that World Cup sheet that comes out on Tuesday, they're going to have to put in a big performance this weekend against the Australian Wallabies. Now let's have a look at the All Blacks forwards. And in the front row this weekend, we've got Williams, Lalala and Takiaho. And um, really, really good three in the front row. Tamiri Williams has been given his opportunity to get another run for the All Blacks. He was, of course, at Mount Smart Stadium, and I thought he did a really good job there, considering the nerves and everything else he would have had coming on for the All Blacks for the first time. So he gets an opportunity in this front row to take it to the Australians. And I think this front row is going to be too strong for the Wallabies. And I think they're going to cause some problems in the front for the Wallabies as far as discretions go and we could probably see a number of penalties, scrum penalties coming the All Blacks way as a result of this tight three. Then we move into the lock positions and we've got Brody Retallick back with his old mate Sam Whitelock this weekend for their 64th and continue world record breaking locking combination in international rugby. These two guys are almost inseparable and um, Whitelock came off the bench last week so he'll be back playing with Rotalic this week and I'll tell you what these guys have got to turn on the dial because Scott Barrett's playing really really good rugby at the moment and has been instrumental in the last couple of weeks in the All Blacks type 5 so we'll see what Whitelock and Brody Rotalic can do but uh, they're still fantastic locks and they're going to win a lot of ball for the All Blacks this weekend no doubt about it the back three for the All Blacks this weekend looks a little bit different as well as Sam Kane comes back from injury and is the captain of the team again this weekend. Finau comes in on the other flank to replace Frizzell and we have Adi Savia at number eight. So a very good back three for the All Blacks. I think the All Blacks miss Sam Kane and um, he has a very special technique and skill set that the All Blacks do lose when he's not in this team. So expect the All Blacks to be getting more clean out ball from San Kane being back into this team. Finau is a really, really good player. Um, Tongan born coming in from the Chiefs and uh, should be adding a lot of value to this All Black back three. And what has to be said about Adi Savia, he just brings it to every game and expecting him to have an extra big one in New Zealand as it's the last game for the All Blacks before they head overseas this season. So having a look at the All Black bench and we've got Dane Coles, Tuanga Fassi, Newell. Good to see Newell back in there. He's going to be a big player for the All Blacks coming off the bench this weekend. Vai, Jacobson, Smith, Mawanga and Dallas McLeod. So that's the bench from the All Blacks, a very good bench. I'm sure that Aaron Smith and Richie Moanga will get game time if the All Blacks are seen to be under pressure and they need the game to be settled down at all. We'll see those guys on early if that's the case. If not, they'll ride it out to the second half. Tuanga Fassi coming in 
And I think the All, All Blacks won't lose too much. Dane Coles is going to get an opportunity. He's been playing well this year. Maybe not the number one pick in the forwards at the moment, Dane Coles, but I think he still gets on and has the ability to score tries as well for the All Blacks. So overall, I think this is a fantastic All Black team. I'm excited to see all the changes, the experimenting that's going on. And I'll tell you what, if this All Blacks team has a big substantial win over the Wallabies this weekend, then it puts the All Blacks in a very good position because they've effectively got two teams playing at a very, very good level. Now, people will say, well, the Wallabies are an easy beat. Well, I don't think they are, and they proved that in the first 15 minutes of the game last week. And uh, let's see how they turn up because they won't be happy. They'll be embarrassed with the way that things went last weekend. And they'll want to come over to New Zealand and they'll want to show not only the New Zealand public but their fans back home and around the world that they've got something to offer for this World Cup campaign. We're only going to see that on Saturday and uh, we'll find out what's going to go on. So I think the All Blacks are going to have a comfortable win again. Um, I think it's going to be about 20 points in it for the All Blacks. I think this back line is super. They're going to score a number of tries and the Wallabies are not going to be able to keep pace with this All Black team for the 80 minutes. I think the bench is strong for the All Blacks. They're going to come on, make a difference in this game, particularly Aaron Smith and Richie Mawanga. I think that's a great move to have those two guys coming in off the bench. And if the All Blacks are having some difficulties in the game, those two heads with their experience and everything else will be able to calm the game down for the All Blacks. But there's enough experience, enough richness in that starting 15 to be able to put a big lead on the Wallabies by half time and I expect that's the intensity that the All Blacks will come out and play with. So let me know what you think is going to happen this weekend between the All Blacks and the Wallabies. Do you think the Wallabies are going to bounce back? Do you think it's going to be closer than the first game or do you think the Wallabies could even get up for a win before they head off overseas as well? Remember after this game the All Blacks only have the one game against the Springboks which will be played at Twickenham in front of 80 plus thousand people. And then it's straight into that World Cup game against France of the first game on September the 8th. So it's getting close folks, it's getting exciting. Don't forget to leave your comments in the comments below. I wanna hear what you think of this All Black team. I wanna hear what you think of the Australian team. Is Eddie Jones starting to work with these combinations to get that right? He doesn't have much time left. Do you think the All Blacks are gonna put on a number of points against the Wallabies? Looking forward to reading all your comments. And don't forget, head over to my community tab on this page and participate in the polls that I've got going on on all the rugby games happening around the world this weekend. There's 10 international matches going on. I want to know who you think is going to win and drop a score prediction in the comments as well. Be really interested to hear what you think. Okay, well that's it from me for Inside Rugby for another episode. Thanks very much for watching my channel. I'm going to be here all the way through the World Cup, so don't forget to subscribe, hit the little bell notification, and I'll be back soon with another video. So until then, have a happy day everyone, stay safe, stay well, and enjoy your rugby. Bye for now. <laughs>